So what we learned in the last lesson was that when a body undergoes an oscillation or simple harmonic motion, the oscillating body has a certain amplitude, frequency and a time period. Now, in this lesson, we'll try to connect the displacement x of such a body with time through an equation. In other words, we'll find an equation that can tell us the displacement of such a body at any time t. So let's get on to understand this slightly complicated topic. So I would request that you pay attention to this lesson a little more. So consider the same block spring system and you can see that in this diagram, we have not shown the spring, but just imagine that the spring is still there. So let us say the mass is pulled to the extreme right and then released to oxalate. Then can we find position of this block as a function of time? That is a question. So to establish an equation that does, let us first tabulate the results of an actual experiment that had a certain mass pulled six meters to the right. So its amplitude is six meters and then it was released. So the displacement x of the block was measured relative to the equilibrium position and this is what was found. At time t equal to zero, you can see that its position is six meters. Then at t equal to one second, its position was found to be 4.24 meters. And then at t equal to two seconds, its position was found to be x is equal to zero meters. At t equal to three seconds, the x position was minus 4.25 meters. At t equal to four seconds, x was found to be minus six meters. That is, you can say it had moved to the extreme left. And so it started moving back such that at t equal to five seconds, x was equal to minus 4.24 meters. Then at t equal to six seconds, its position was 0 0.01 meters or almost at the equilibrium position. Then at t equal to seven seconds, its position was 4.25 meters. And at t equal to eight seconds, x was again six meters, or you can say it was back to its original position. So this is how the position of the mass looks at various times between t equal to zero seconds and t equal to eight seconds when the mass comes back to its original position. So let us try to plot the position of this mass with respect to time so that you have time on this axis and the position on this axis. So we can see at time t equal to zero, its position is six meters. At time t equal to one seconds, it's 4.24 meters. So it'll be somewhere over here. And then at time t equal to two seconds, it is at zero meter mark, which is therefore over here. And at time t equal to three seconds, it is at minus 4.25 meters, which should be somewhere over here. And at time t equal to four seconds, it is at minus six meters or the extreme left. And then at time t equal to five seconds, it is again at minus 4.24 meters or roughly somewhere over here. And at t equal to six seconds, it is at 0 0.01 meter mark, which is, you can see almost over here, let us say. And at t equal to seven seconds, it is at 4.25 meters, which should be over here. And at t equal to eight seconds, it is at six meters, which is this. So let us connect these dots and see how the graph looks like. So it should be, let's go ahead and connect it with a smooth curve. And you would see the graph roughly looks something like this. And what you can also see is that if you join the position of the mass at various times, you'll get a graph pretty much like this. So this is what you call a sine curve. 
and you're getting exactly the same sine curve over here also where you're actually putting the position of the mass with respect to time. So one thing you'll quickly see is that the mass comes back to its initial position that is x equal to plus 6 meters in 8 seconds. This therefore means that the time period t of the mass is 8 seconds. So you see this curve defines the time displacement relationship for this mass for one cycle of simple harmonic motion. Well, if you continue plotting the values, what you'll get is this. So what I've done is taken some more time values and the corresponding x values or displacement values and put them in an Excel sheet and plotted a graph over here. And well, if you continue for more values of x as time t passes, this is what you get. So I've taken time values right up to 24 seconds and found the corresponding x values and plotted them on this graph. And such a graph is what you call a sine graph and this wave pattern is called a sinusoidal wave. And if the relationship between displacement and time is sinusoidal in nature, that is it looks like such a graph, it is termed as a simple harmonic motion. Conversely, if the nature of motion is simple harmonic, the displacement time graph would be a sine wave and would look like this. So from this graph, you can see that if an ideal oscillation is done, that is there is no friction, the time period would be 8 seconds for each cycle and each of the sections you see here is one cycle. So we can say that end of 8 seconds, one cycle has been completed. At end of 16 seconds, two cycles have been completed. And at end of 24 seconds, three cycles have happened. Now, the problem is that we cannot really keep experimenting and plotting values of x for various times. What we need is an equation that represents this graph. Or in other words, you can say that we need a relationship between time and displacement in which if you plug the time value, you can find the displacement value x. So the equation x is equal to a cos 2 pi t upon t accurately defines this graph. So let's go ahead and write this general equation. x is equal to a cos 2 pi t upon t. So this is the equation of this graph. It essentially means that if you put any t value, you will get the corresponding x value if you if you have the amplitude and the time period t available over here. So this capital T here is a time period and a is the amplitude. If you substitute the value of small t, that is any time and amplitude and time period capital T, you will get the corresponding x value. So if you were to write this general equation for this particular case, what you'll get is x is equal to amplitude we know is 6 meters into cos of 2 pi t upon capital T and we've seen that the time period in this case was 8 seconds. So let's go ahead and see whether this equation is true or not. So let us put various values of t to see if we indeed get x values that we found earlier. So at t equal to 0 seconds, if we put the value of t as 0 seconds in this equation, we'll get x is equal to 6 cos 0. And we know cos 0 is 1. So you get x is equal to 6 meters. Well, this is true. We know that at t equal to 0 seconds, x indeed is 6 meters. If you put t equal to 1 second, what you get is x is equal to 6 cos 2 pi upon 8 or 6 cos pi by 4 and this when you calculate you get x is equal to 4.24 meters which is again true this is what we had found earlier and at t equal to 2 seconds if we substitute t as 2 seconds what you'll get is x is equal to 0 meters because when you put t equal to 2 what you get is 4 pi upon 8 which is pi by 2 and we know cos of pi by 2 or cos 90 is 0 and therefore you get x value as 0 which is again true because we found earlier that at t equal to 2 seconds x is indeed at its mean position or equilibrium position that is 0 meter. Let's go ahead and 
find what is the displacement value when t is equal to 4 seconds. And when you put t is equal to 4 seconds, what you find is the value you get here is 2 pi into 4, which is 8 pi, and therefore it becomes cos pi, and we know cos pi is again equal to 1, and therefore you get x is equal to 6 meters. And if you continue putting values, and let's go ahead and put straight away t is equal to 8 seconds, what you'll find is x is once again equal to 6 meters, which is again true because at t equal to 8 seconds, the body or the mass is completed one cycle and come back to its original position, which was 6 meters. Now, let's see if at t equal to 16 seconds, we get x is equal to 6 meters because you know if the period of motion is 8 seconds, every 8 seconds it should come back to its original position and x should therefore be 6 meters. And indeed, if you put t equal to 16 seconds over here, you get 32 pi upon 8 which is 4 pi and we know cos of 4 pi is also 1 so you get x is equal to 6 meters again. And I'm sorry, here x was actually minus 6 meters. So you see, at t equal to 16 seconds, you're getting x again as 6 meters, which essentially means that end of two time periods, that is 8 plus 8, the mass is again back in its initial position. So it's, it's really great to have this very convenient equation that can be used to determine x values for various time values or vice versa. And we do not quite have to get in the mess of making graphs and doing actual experiments. Well, there's a small problem here. What if I said that the box did not start from extreme right position, but from the middle? So what we're saying is that at time t equal to zero, x is zero meters. Unlike the earlier situation where at time t equal to zero seconds, x was equal to plus six meters. Will, will this equation that we've written over here will this hold true for this situation as well? So let's go ahead and find whether it will be true or not. So we put x is equal to 6 cos 2 pi into 0 time t is equal to 0 upon 8 and what we find is x is equal to 6 meters. Well, you can see this is not true because at time t equal to 0, we've put t equal to 0 the displacement is actually zero meter or the mass is actually at its equilibrium position. So we can say that this equation is not really true when the mass starts from the equilibrium position or from the middle. So we need a modified form of equation that can also take care of the change in position that we just made. That is the mass starts from the middle instead of extreme right. So what if we change this equation to this? So we write this equation as x is equal to 6 cos 2 pi t upon 8. And we add pi by 2 radians over here. Now, will this equation be true for this situation? So let's go ahead and see whether it will be true or not. So we put t equal to 0 in this equation and what we get is x is equal to 6 cos 0 plus pi by 2 and we know that cos of pi by 2 or cos of 90 is 0 and what we get is x is equal to 0 meters and this would then be true because indeed at t equal to 0 seconds x is 0 meters. So now, let us say if the block, instead of starting from the extreme right or the middle, actually started its journey from extreme left. That is, at t equal to 0, x was minus 6 meters. Would this equation hold? Again, we know that this equation will not hold because if we put t equal to 0 over here, what we get is x is equal to 6 meters, while x should have been minus 6 meters. So, can we find an equation which will describe the motion of this mass if it starts from x equal to minus 6 meters or from extreme left? So let's try this equation where we write 
x is equal to 6 cos 2 pi by 8 t plus pi. So instead of pi by 2, now we've put a pi value. And let's see if this equation would fit into a situation where the mass moves from extreme left. So we put x is equal to 6 cos 2 pi by 8 and time t here is 0 seconds into 0 plus pi. And what we find is x now equals 6 cos pi and we know cos of pi is minus 1 and this therefore equals minus 6 meters and indeed we've got the right value of x as minus 6 meters when time t is 0. So this equation now describes this situation very well. So what we can see is that this equation is valid if the mass is pulled from extreme right or this value which we've put over here is 0 over here. So we need a form of equation which can be written like this. That is x is equal to a cos 2 pi t upon t plus a certain angle phi where phi would be the relevant angle to be put depending on the where mass starts its journey. So when the mass started its journey from extreme right, phi becomes zero. When it started from the middle, phi became pi by two. And when it started journey from extreme left, phi was pi degree. So this phi value is called the phase angle and helps us write the correct equation depending on where the mass starts at time t equal to zero. You can also say that the phase angle determines what phase of journey is the mass when it starts. Alternately, if the phase angle is given, we can tell that what the position of the mass is when it started its journey. Now, we've also learned from earlier lesson that two pi upon t is nothing but omega. So this equation is very often very commonly written as x is equal to a cos omega t plus phi. And we'll make use of this equation a lot in the following lessons. But what's important for you is to understand the physical significance of this equation, what are the various terms in it, and how they relate to the real situation where a mass is oscillating. So what I would suggest is this is a slightly complicated list. If you've not understood a good part of it, it's absolutely okay. Don't get too worried. I suggest you watch this lesson once again and read up your books also. And I think you'll get a very good understanding of what a sine wave is or how the displacement of a mass relates to time when it is oscillating under simple harmonic motion. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel for many more interesting videos.